All right, let's turn now to details behind the all-time record profit generated by Goldman Sachs last quarter. The former securities firm turned bank took on more risk and as a result made more money on its trading desk than ever before. Off to Sue Keenan we go on why so much profit during one of the worst economic downturns in history. It is kind of baffling. You try to get your head around this. Yeah, especially given that they took the bailout money and right. managed to pay it back. Well, right now when it comes to trading, Goldman, by attrition if you want to call it anything less, is one of the few games clearly the biggest left in town. And when it comes to posting a record profit this past quarter, records on the trading desk played a huge role. Check this out. Goldman made more than $100 million in trading revenue on a record 46 separate trading days in the second quarter. That comes to 71% of the time. And that's not just a record breaker. It's staggering when compared to the previous quarter's record of 34 nine-digit or $100 million days. Now, according to their latest filing with the SEC, Goldman made at least $50 million on 58 of the 65 trading days in the quarter. That is 89% of the time. The bank also had fewer days of trading losses in the previous quarter, only two. Goldman's ability to post an all-time record profit last quarter results from both trading revenue and equity underwriting reaching an all-time high. By all accounts, Carol, the bank was taking on a lot more risk this quarter. Right. And, you know, Stu, it really is hard to believe that this comes during a recession when so many other banks have suffered and really collapsed here. Well, counterintuitive as it may be, it could be the key, according to William Cohen. He's the former J.P. Morgan Chase and Lazard banker author of the House of Cards about the collapse of Bear Stearns. In fact, he had a editorial in the Financial Times today. He's saying the fact that so many of Goldman's competitors are out of business or, quote, severely wounded puts them in a very strong position. Goldman has figured out, he says, a way to take risk with less competition bidding against them and take that risk, Carol, mm. he says, while making money at the same time. All right, Sue, thank you so much. Well, for more on Goldman Sachs, let's bring in an insider. She is former Goldman Managing Director Nomi Prinz. Prinz is the author of an upcoming book, It Takes a Pillage, Behind the Bailouts, Bonuses, and Backroom Deals from Washington to Wall Street. Uh, Nomi, good to have you uh, with us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks, Carol. You know, you just heard Sue kind of breaking down. You know, Goldman had a record quarter. You know, they had, what, was it uh, $100 million uh, that they're making daily? They did that 71% of the time during the second quarter. I mean, is Goldman so different from everybody else? Well, Goldman certainly is is great at trading. I mean, beyond what it's made every single day, 78% of its record profit revenues did come from its trading operations. So a substantial portion of what it does is related to trading. Um, but not only that, Goldman did have the benefit of a whole lot of additional capital over the last two quarters that it received from uh, the fall of last year, the beginning quarter of this year, to help basically plenish a lot of those trading positions. You can't trade without capital. So you got to be good to trade well, but you also have to have the capital to put into the game. And, and they have received a lot, um, we should note, of federal capital, not just the $10 billion of TARP money, which they did repay, um, but another $53 billion worth of, of federal right. subsidization. So, that so you're saying definitely money from helps. you, me, everybody else? Well, that, that's absolutely true. They got almost $13 billion through uh, what the federal government gave to AIG, which mm -hmm. went to Goldman, even though Goldman said uh, before okay. it received that money that it was hedged against N those positions. Nomi, hang on for a sec. We'll take a break, come back and talk some more. We're talking with Nomi Prince. The subject is Goldman Sachs. Back in a moment. We're back with Nomi Prince, former managing director of a Goldman Sachs and author of It Takes a Pillage Behind the Bailouts, Bonuses, and Backroom Deals from Washington to Wall Street. Pillage, it's in the title of your, your new book. I mean, when it comes to Goldman and the record profits that they're making, uh, Nomi, is it shameful that they're making so much money or kudos to them for doing better than everybody else? Well, I think it's somewhere in between, Carol. It's, it's kudos to them to find a way to use a tremendous portion of public capital or government subsidies in order to turn it into profit. I mean, they could have easily turned it into a loss. They did They did know how to use that capital to determine how to make a profit, and that does, uh, you know, that does take talent, and, and that does take being good at trading. But you certainly can't do that without having the capital to begin with, and, and they did um, relative to all other investment banks or investment banks who became uh, commercial banks as they did when they became a bank holding company last fall, right. uh, received more public assistance than any other former investment bank. But to be fair, I mean, Goldman wasn't the only one getting handouts, you know, in several different directions from the government. I mean, they didn't do anything wrong legally. I mean, they were allowed to do this, correct? 
Well, they they applied under the programs that they had accessible to them. They, they did do a couple of things, like they became a bank holding company, but they still report their risk figures and therefore uh, their capital requirements relative to their old investment banking status. So they've really tried to play both sides. It's 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 intelligent. It's it's a very good way to do business. But but they are taking advantage of a situation that they have. Do you think they also take advantage of having such close ties with the government? You know, Nomi, there's been so much critically so written about Goldman's uh, close ties with government officials, a lot of former Goldman Sachs people going into government. So do you think they took advantage of that, that situation when other firms really didn't have that advantage? Well, absolutely. They, they, they were at the table. They were, they were in Washington uh, more than many other firms, and so therefore they definitely had that advantage. Of course, they had the former Treasury Secretary, Hank Paulson, was the former CEO of Goldman Sachs, who also presided over a lot of the decisions that were made when the original, not just bailout money, not just TARP money, but, but the other types of federal subsidies and assistance came uh, last fall and have continued into the beginning of this year. So, so absolutely. Again, that makes, that is an opportunist situation. It's also a situation of reality. They, they do have that revolving right. door covered between Washington and Wall Street. But again, do you fault them for that or that's just the way it plays out? Or do you feel like there it's, was kind of a, a backroom deal that was done specifically and only exclusively for Goldman because of those relationships? It wasn't exclusively for Goldman. They, they did receive and figure out a way to extract more uh, federal subsidies. Uh, Morgan Stanley did get some last year as well when Goldman and Morgan became bank holding companies. So no, it wasn't. It wasn't just um, Goldman. But but and yes, they did it really really well. They are a smart firm. Lloyd Blankfein is a smart CEO, mm -hmm. um, and they figured out a way to change their name, keep their investment banking status, receive uh, the most amount of capital they could, and turn a profit of it. That that does require uh, being good at what they do, and it also requires having tight relationships and being able to bend the ear, uh, not perhaps to get more money than anyone else, which, which they have relative to other investment banks, mm. but also to put the idea that that money is required by the industry. You Nomi, know, you mentioned uh, CEO Lloyd Blankfein. There's a story this week about him kind of warning employees to avoid making big-ticket, high-profile purchases. Is really trying to kind of keep a low profile, especially with the White House, really kind of ramping up uh, their campaign against uh, high executive compensation. Do you buy it that you think Blank Fine's really doing it? You've been inside Goldman, you know the culture. Do you think he really is sending out some strong warning signals? I think, and this this goes again with the fact that Blankfein is smart and 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 wants to keep his business intact and wants to keep paying people. And and the less he can get of public scrutiny and more importantly congressional scrutiny that could come in the way of how the firm does business or how the firm pays bonuses, the better. So you know he's smart. He knows that the the, the winds out there are are being very skeptical of Goldman throughout the press and in Congress. There have been letters to the Fed uh, last week from the Senate and the House. Um, asking some very pointed questions about what Goldman's done. And I think what, what, what Blankfein doesn't want to do right. is have too much scrutiny come down and affect how uh, the firm can operate. But should that scrutiny come down, I bring that up because you recently wrote on MotherJones.com um, that one of the most important things that you learned over your years of working at Wall Street, including your time at Goldman, is that numbers lie. I mean, what are you saying? Are you saying that firms like Goldman are kind of lying when it comes to financials and all the numbers that they have to report here? Um, you know, I think, and, and someone actually, uh, many people wrote to me and said it's not numbers that lie, it's people that lie. So I guess, hmm. I guess somewhere the truth could be in between. But, but is that I, what you're I, saying? I don't know. Is that what you're saying? We've only I, got about 30 seconds here. I'm saying that there's a lot of figuring that goes into numbers that come out of Wall Street that um, don't have an exact science attached to them. Things are run by models, capital requirements are set by models, and, and mm -hmm. there are ways to um, make things look better than they are in the short term. All right, we've got to run. Nomi, thanks so much. Enjoy talking with Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Nomi Prince, everybody. She's a former Goldman Sachs managing director and author of It Takes a Pillage, Behind the Bailouts, Bonuses, and Backroom Deals from Washington to Wall Street.